I'm Hillary Mason, the general manager for machine learning at Cloudera. So I was the founder of Fast Forward Labs about four and a half years ago, where we do applied machine learning research and advising to help customers really accelerate and embrace machine learning and AI opportunities. Uh, we were acquired by Cloudera about a year ago and are now Cloudera Fast Forward Labs. This morning, I spoke about the power of metaphor and how we think about the problems we need to solve and how that metaphor can then drive the architectural decisions we make. And so we work pretty broadly in machine learning across a variety of industries, use cases, and techniques. Um, and within that, we find that there are a few really powerful metaphors that tend to resonate. And of course, graphs are one of those dominant metaphors uh, where it just makes a lot of intuitive sense to us that uh, the world is represented in nodes and edges and uh, characteristics of the relationships between those nodes. Um, and so this morning, I was really trying to draw out that interplay between the way we think about building machine learning systems and the metaphors we choose, particularly around graphs, given that we're here, uh, to connect them all together. So we do a pretty wide variety of work and we really like the hard problems, the ones where at the beginning of the project, you're not sure if it's possible or not. Um, and I always say what, what we try and do is take it from being a science problem to being an engineering problem. Um, so I highlight a couple of places where we found that that graph metaphor and that in fact Neo4j specifically has been really useful in getting it to that state of being an engineering problem. Um, one of them was around building a tool for a bank that was trying to get the right information to the right traders at exactly the right moment to make better trading decisions, particularly with respect to commodities, but broadening out to other kinds of securities. Um, there's a really interesting graph metaphor here, uh, the relationship between uh, a commodity or a particular company, uh, the relationship between a company and a person, the relationship between any of these things and what's actually in the news. Uh, and there are really interesting pieces of the machine learning analysis to sit on that newsfeed to understand what entities are represented, to understand the relationship between those entities and how that can ev eventually impact uh, the thing that they want to trade. And so that's one project where uh, Neo4j was a piece of the infrastructure that actually allowed us to go from this idea where we didn't know if it would actually be useful, that we could do it at a high enough level of quality to support people who are extremely professional in their domain, um, all the way to something that is now an app that they can run, um, that is something they use in their day-to-day -day work. I'm a huge fan of having bad ideas, and I'll tell you why. So if you feel comfortable enough to have bad ideas, as well as good ideas, as well as ideas that may be a little out there, uh, you know that you are able to actually get um, some of those things that might be a little too risky or a little too dangerous to otherwise share, you know, written down and in a process. And if, whenever I walk into a company and I ask them, you know, what data science and machine learning use cases are they looking at? If I see a list that is only obvious good ideas, things we know are gonna be solved, things that we can calculate exactly what the ROI will be, I get worried because I feel like they are definitely missing out on some of the more high impact, uh, potentially huge, hugely valuable ideas. So bad ideas are the gateway to the best ideas. So I think we're, uh, people always ask me where the future of AI and machine learning is going. And I have a couple of answers that might seem to be in conflict, but are actually the same thing. Um, one is that the technology will continue to evolve and the capabilities, what is actually possible, what is actually cheap and accessible will continue to change. Uh, we are not at the end, we're not at a plateau of innovation here. New stuff is becoming possible all the time and that is going to continue. On the other hand, I think a lot of the hype um, and the excitement that was generated perhaps out of proportion to the technical capabilities will go away. So I'm saying both that we will see huge technical innovation, we'll see a lot less excitement about it. And I think success and maturity for machine learning and AI will We'll know we have it when nobody cares about machine learning and AI anymore, when the, the technology is faded into the background. And the thing we're excited about is what we can actually do with it.
I'm particularly excited about where we're going with the um, developer experience for data science machine learning applications. What I mean by that is that today we have this very disjoint process of doing exploration, model development, deployment, monitoring things to make sure they haven't drifted too far, retraining models. Um, and this is something where I think if you look a year or two ahead, uh, we will have tooling to support doing this across a variety of different metaphors that we want to use so that data scientists are able to, in one uh, tool set, go from that bad idea to good idea to model to production system um, without relying on other people to support them in that work. And that's something I'm personally very excited about.